A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. From hurricanes to heat waves, we've seen the devastation that occurs from environmental disasters across the country. But have we paid attention to the communities that are particularly vulnerable to these calamities? James Shepard is a meteorologist who's looked at what he calls the weather gap, which shows how disasters have affected people of color and marginalized communities at disproportionately higher rates. Today, James offers solutions to improving conditions for these populations. So what's this weather gap that you're talking about, Dr. Shepard? It's the simple notion that a disproportionate sensitivity to extreme weather events and a delay in the ability to bounce back from them. That's what we talk about with the weather gap. I mean, may, that may sound familiar to you, this weather gap. There's something you often hear about called the wealth gap. That'll come into play in a moment. For example, black communities feel the pain of heat waves disproportionately because we tend to live in places that have more heat. So that's a good example of what we talk about. But the reality is we live in the South, in the Mid-Atlantic, and these are places that disproportionately receive hurricanes, wildfires, heat waves, tornadoes, snowstorms. There are places in the U.S. that don't get all of those things. In the South and in the Mid-Atlantic, we experience all of those things. 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated the population of New Orleans and the Gulf Coast states. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. This is some of the scholarly research that I've done at the University of Georgia. Now, most of my research involves doing things like modeling hurricanes, predicting whether we're going to have extreme floods. But I ventured into this idea of vulnerability. And let's break down what vulnerability is. Exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity. All right, let's, what does that mean? Let's say next week, D.C. has a big snowstorm. You get 20 inches of snow. That's not my prediction, by the way, so nobody tweet that. 20 inches of snow, the snowstorm, that's the exposure event. Everybody is exposed to it. Sensitivity. There are some people, some businesses that are more sensitive to the exposure than others. And then adaptive capacity or what we call resiliency means, okay, I'm sensitive to that snowstorm, but I'm able to bounce back from it. I've got a snowblower. I've got insurance if a tree falls on my house. That's what we mean by adaptive capacity. And so when we put these all together and when we think about certain parts of the population, there are some people that have higher vulnerability to weather events than others. So a recent report by the National Climate Assessment here in Washington, D.C. shows that older adults, children, communities of color, low-income communities are increasingly vulnerable to extreme weather, and I'm about to say it, climate change. I could be riding the metro, chit-chatting with somebody on the metro, and I tell them I'm a climate scientist, and we do deal with skeptics. And so every now and then, a climate skeptic will say, well, hey, Dr. Shepard, you do know that the climate changes naturally. And I said, yes, I have a PhD in atmospheric sciences. <laughs> I didn't miss that. But the reality is, on top of our naturally varying climate system, we have a human steroid. So there's nothing that suggests that a natural cycle cannot be modified by humans. So how do we close the weather gap? Again, TED's about ideas, but TED's also about solutions. So here are my three ideas about how we close this weather gap. The first thing that we do to close the weather gap is erode the income gap. So we got to get rid of the income gap, because when we get rid of the income gap, then more people can withstand. I want to go back to that before I kind of go too far, because look at those people in uh, Hurricane Katrina. Look at the faces that were at the Superdome relying on services. These were the low vulnerability populations. 
These are the people that perhaps did not have insurance, did not have an extra car, did not have a, a fund that allowed them to go to Atlanta and stay in a hotel for a week. The income gap has to be eroded. We also have to understand these vulnerabilities in place, time, and economics, and then act. So tonight, by coming to this TEDx LaDroit Park event, you now, hopefully, if you didn't before, understand this concept of vulnerability. So perhaps you won't look at a hurricane, heat wave, or snowstorm the same. And so when we have this understanding of the vulnerabilities, we can act. And so we've been talking about ways that we can get the science over into the planning community. And the final way that we erode the weather gap is just increasing our weather and climate literacy. A lot of people don't realize that weather and climate are connected. So I want to close with a favorite statement of mine from one of Dr. King's most important works, his letter from Birmingham jail. He wasn't writing about hurricanes. He was writing about the challenges of his time. He said, moreover, I'm cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit by idly in Atlanta and not be concerned about what is happening in Birmingham. And justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny that ties to weather and climate too. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Washington, D.C. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Thanks to the organizing team at TEDx LaDroid Park. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.